polyester, polyamide, polypropylene. They are all man-made fibers. These fibers appeared on the market in the last century, and ever since then, their popularity has been on the increase. For millennia, mankind has used cotton, wool, hemp and linen to dress itself and furnish its domestic spaces. Silk was the preserve of the rich, but at the end of the 19th century, things began to change. Some extraordinary scientists invented fibers similar to silk that were produced thanks to chemical substances that dissolve cellulose, making it spinnable. These fibers were called artificial fibers, new materials with names such as viscous and rayon, which would go on to win over consumers, influencing fashion and lifestyles in the process. But, as is made clear by this graph, since the end of the Second World War, the market has really belonged to synthetic fibers obtained from oil. You can see how the production levels of these fibers have increased 69,000 tons in 1950, reaching 10,700,000 tons in 1980. Their increasing popularity really does seem unstoppable. Man-made fibers are today in far more widespread use than natural fibers. Global consumption of synthetic and man-made fibers, taken together, now exceeds 53 million tons per year. More than 65% of the fibers used around the world are man-made fibers. But how can we explain this extraordinary success? Man-made fibers have very specific technical characteristics, which are predefined as far back as the design stage. They can be very tough and resistant, water repellent, elastic, fire retardant and antibacterial, and can have numerous other properties. They can even be colored during the spinning stage, adjusting the stain levels prior to extrusion. All of these characteristics enable man-made fibers to deliver the levels of performance required by the various final applications. It is precisely for this reason that they are taking on an increasingly important role in the fields once dominated by traditional textiles, such as clothing, furniture and flooring, but also, and above all, in the field of technical textiles, by which I mean the automotive sector, the medical sector, sport, and even in the construction industry, where they are used, for example, in reinforcing structures or temporary frame structures. Man-made fibers are the outcome of ongoing research that involves companies within the industry, specialist research centers and universities. The continuous research is geared towards enhancing the performance levels of the fibers, thereby constantly expanding their potential for utilization. For Radici Group, this ongoing research is not just about the technological development of the fibers. It also makes it almost obligatory to take account of the environmental properties and problems associated with the product. The main problem is the difficulty of managing the end of the life cycle in products created using man-made fibers. Radici Group is investing time and money in order to resolve this problem and to achieve tangible results. It is widely believed that natural fibers are more ecological than man-made fibers. What is produced through the cultivation of the fields or the rearing of the animals is deemed to be green by definition. But is this really the case? In truth, the intensive cultivation of cotton requires not only substantial expanses of agricultural land, which cannot then be used for the cultivation of food crops, but also enormous quantities of water and chemical substances such as insecticides, fertilizers or weed killers. Moreover, the transport of cotton from the areas of cultivation to the production plants and, above all, the processes required to turn the fibre into yarn require very high levels of energy consumption. The amount of water which around the world is becoming an increasingly precious resource required to produce yarn is quite staggering. It is estimated that the cultivation of the cotton needed to produce a pair of jeans costs the environment something like 6,800 litres of water, whereas a t-shirt takes 1,500 litres, and a great deal more water is used by the dyeing treatments and domestic cleaning and washing machines. 
Since they are industrial products, man-made fibers have less of an impact on the environment, on condition, of course, that the production processes are carried out carefully and rigorously. This table helps us to compare the pros and cons of natural and man-made fibers. Analyzing a product in terms of its environmental impact means charting its production history from the beginning to the end of its life cycle. Natural fibers have one great advantage with respect to man-made fibers. They are biodegradable, meaning that they are reprocessed by the soil more rapidly than chemical materials. We're talking about a few decades, as opposed to three or four centuries. That said, their environmental impact is considerable, if we take into account, as I stated earlier, the extensive use of soil and water and the chemical substances required to ensure a good harvest. The transformation of natural fibers into colored or treated yarn also requires an additional use of chemical substances, water and energy, and generates significant industrial emissions, to say nothing of the need to dispose of the pollutants involved. The planet can no longer bear the brunt of all this. The industry as a whole has considerable impact on the health of our planet. And climate change and the increase in the global population will render the environmental equilibrium increasingly delicate. A responsible industry must then dedicate time and resources to coming up with technological solutions that reduce the environmental impact of its products. And the time we have available lest we forget, is limited. We must hurry if we want to ensure that our children inherit a planet fit for them to live on. At Radishi Group, we don't have a magic formula, but we have identified a product development philosophy that is as sustainable as possible, without compromise to product performance. We think, for example, that it is crucial to increase the use of renewable raw materials and to recycle materials that would otherwise be destined for landfill, such as PET, made from recycled plastic bottles. This material retains excellent properties, even though its life cycle has come to an end. Our corn leaf, our rad yarn and our star-like yarn products are the direct result of this philosophy. 